People love swinging these things around, most commonly referred to as nunchucks. But what most people don't seem to know is the correct way to actually use them. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the nunchucks, or nunchaku as it's actually pronounced in Japanese. And I'm gonna be using these traditional Okinawan ones so that you can avoid these stupid mistakes and actually look like someone who knows what he or she, or anyone in between, is doing when you're swinging these. Keep watching. Now, the first thing you need to know is that the word or the name itself is an Okinawan term. It's not strictly Japanese because the birthplace of karate, Okinawa, has its own sort of language called Uchinaguchi. And nun is the first part of the word. And chaku, chaku, although the U should be silent, is actually the second part of the word. And this literally means two chaku, which is feet, okay? Two feet. That is the length of the nunchuck, if we want to use the English uh, way to pronounce the word, the nunchuck, right? So it's supposed to be two feet long, which makes sense, right? This is about a foot, and there's some string in between, and here's another foot. This brings me to the very first point of how to correctly use the nunchucks. You need to hold it at the end to correctly utilize the complete length of the weapon. It's not a party trick, it's a weapon. You're not supposed to hold it by the string and swing it around and throw it in the air. You're supposed to, let's move out a little bit, okay, so I don't hit the camera. You're supposed to hold it in the end so you gain maximum power as you swing it to crush somebody's face in, all right? And if you hold it in here and do these fancy small moves, that might look great on uh, the big screen or in Hollywood or even in your fancy YouTube videos. But if you wanna actually hit somebody with it, you wanna keep them at a distance. You wanna stay safe yourself. And then you wanna have maximum power and impact, which of course is at the end of the nunchaku. Meaning, you need to do these types of moves. No matter how you swing or no matter how you strike, you wanna always hold it at the very end. Now, of course, you gotta leave a little bit of room, okay, in case you wanna use other types of techniques where you actually hook with this part of the nunchaku. That's fine, but if you're constantly holding it by the string, in order to do your fancy party tricks, then I can immediately tell that you have no idea how to actually use this as a weapon. And I can't even do those party tricks as you just noticed. Now, moving on, the second key thing that I need you to know when it comes to correctly using the nunchaku is is to have complete arm extension as well. The old Okinawan masters actually refer to it as a portable bow. And bow is the literal translation of staff. So imagine using a long staff. Let's move over here. Imagine I have a long staff. Now ideally, I want my nunchaku to be as long as my staff is. Look at that. But it's not, right? It's way shorter, unless you include your arm as well. See how it suddenly becomes longer? So if you properly want to utilize the complete leverage, all of the power in this amazing weapon, it's not a toy, it's a weapon, then you need to use your complete arm and not just stand like this. So remember, the first point was hold it by the end. Now the second point right here is extend your arm fully as you do your strikes, your swings. Look, full, full arm extension. It's a throwing motion. And of course, the same goes for whenever you're using a staff. You wanna use the same kind of throwing, throwing mechanics as you strike, because that's the natural way that your body actually generates power, okay? So, point one, hold it by the end. 
point two, use complete arm extension as you do your moves, okay? And now, point three, and one of my favorites. Please try to catch your nunchaku by the hip. You know, we use the hand by the hip in karate a lot, right? When we punch or block or strike, we usually keep the passive hand by the hip. And the same goes in this case. You don't want to try to catch it in the air because that means you will most likely break your fingers unless you're using one of those fake toy nunchucks that's usually shiny and full of glitter and looks fancy, right? But if you use the real deal, this right here has a lot of potential power in it. And when this hits you or strikes you in the hand, it's not gonna be fun, okay? So here's what you do. Keep your passive hand by the hip, and then you open and close the hand this way. Zoom in on that, right? See this motion? It's so simple. Now what happens is, as I strike, I just catch it by the string. Look, by the string, okay? Because in case I hit myself, I don't want the end of the nunchuck to, uh, to break my fingers, all right? So I try to catch it by the string, and then I pull it out here before I grip it tightly. And that's when I have completely caught my nunchuck, right? So I go here, look. And that's how you do it, okay? So don't try to catch it in midair and don't try to throw it around everywhere and then ta-da, catch it like this. Because although it might look fancy, might look impressive even, that's not the real correct way of actually using this old traditional weapon from Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. And after watching this video, I hope that you can respect that. Train hard, good luck, and have fun. <laughs>